changed my name, I moved states, I burned off my fingerprints, and I burned my social security card. Hi, I'm Jeff. I'm Danielle. And this is... It's Halloween month. That means it's time for spooky movies. We decided that because we love horror movies, we're going to force our brilliant opinions on you for the sake of views. So Danielle and I have created our own personal top five list of movies that we think you should watch during the month of October. Uh, these aren't necessarily the scariest horror movies, nor are they necessarily the best horror movies, or maybe just the best movies in general. But they're movies that we think are enjoyable. Movies that are fun to watch during the month. Um, on top of the top five, we also have picked two movies that we don't like. Because you can't make a YouTube video without trying to stir up some hate and angry comments. So what I want to say um, before I give you my first movie. <laughs> Here's a disclaimer. Here's my disclaimer. So uh, I am a massive wimp. I can't watch slashers. I can't do gore. Mm. So the movies that I like are typically ghost centric. And not scary. And not scary. Yeah. Yes. If they're if they're goofy scary, that's what that's my ticket. Yeah. So <laughs> Speaking of which, uh, you know I'm gonna save I'm gonna save that one for the big finish. A little known film called Hell House LLC. I've heard of it. And that came out in 2015. And I can't I can't stress enough how much the stupid title does not reflect the movie. Hell House LLC. Give us a brief synopsis of the movie. It follows this group of like 20 somethings who. Their deal is that they make haunted houses and they, they have bought this dilapidated hotel in which there may or may not have been some satanic worship. You know, and, and maybe somebody hung himself there, but it just, it, it's great. It's good for a haunted house. Yeah. So it's a, it's a documentary style um, record of their journey making this haunted house. And I can tell you, you may have guessed, it doesn't go well. No, most of these horror movies don't go well at the end. No. We watched it together. It's not on my list, but it is a movie I like um, because it's just, it shows how hard it is to be a young entrepreneur. It sure does. In the year of 2015. It is hard out there. What was the Rotten Tomatoes uh, review of this? What what percentage did it get on Rotten Tomatoes? Uh, Which is not always a metric for whether a movie is good or bad. But this is my most uh, critically accepted movie. Uh, this got 89%. This is a solid B+. That's a good, and especially for like a small indie movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's well made. It's well acted. I don't think there's any special effects in it. No, it's all like very, like, no CGI. Maybe a little CGI. Maybe a Maybe little bit. Maybe just a test. All right, so that's your number five. That's my number okay, five. Sweet. All right, well, my number five, uh, this one is the movie 1408. Oh, yeah, an yeah. oldie but a goodie. It's an oldie, but it's from 2007, so yes, an it is an oldie. An oldie but a goodie. 1408 stars John Cusack before he stopped being in good movies, uh, and weirdly enough, also stars Sam L. Jackson. Oh, I forgot about that. John Cusack is a writer who basically goes and debunks um, haunted attractions. Uh, so he'll go to a uh, a small town where they have like a haunted motel uh, or like a lighthouse, and then he will stay overnight. So he debunks all this stuff, and he's really unhappy because he's looking for a real haunting. He, he wants to believe. He's he wants, like me. He wants to believe. He wants to believe. He's also like estranged from his wife. There's like there's like personal family drama, and he goes to uh, a hotel, which is which name I forget, and he goes. Uh, up to Sam Jackson, who apparently runs it and wants to stay in a room that is notoriously haunted, and the room is 1408. Um, and he goes in. It is literally John Cusack in a hotel room for the entire movie. Yeah. There are occasions where, like, he exits it, but it's very much a... Um, the the room is sort of, like, alive, or the hotel's alive, and it's messing with him. Um, so it, Shining rebuff. <clears throat> yeah, it is very much kind of Shining-esque. There are horror movies where you know that there's the potential for somebody to have a happy ending. This is not one of those. It's a Stephen King joint, by the way. 1408 is, is a Stephen King novel. Didn't I know that? Yeah. Uh, it has a 80% rating on Rotten Tomatoes. Right. So pretty good. Respectable. As I mean, better than It too. 
What is your number four, Daniel? Uh, I, I will bring to your attention one Grave Encounters uh -huh. from 2010. Grave Encounters, if you have ever watched a ghost hunting show like Ghost Hunters or especially Ghost Adventures, this is such a fantastic spot on satire. We've got a ghost hunting crew coming into some big abandoned asylum, you know, your typical setting, and it is headed by a very Zach Baggins-esque man. Uh, so they're going in to investigate this abandoned building, and uh, you know, as in typical horror movie fashion, they're slowly picked off one by one by the malevolent spirits that occupy this building, which I believe was a... It's an insane asylum, insane I believe. Or asylum. it's a hospital slash a insane asylum. Yeah, one of those, is. you know, trots the line. It's well, it's a lot like, weirdly, I, I like you did this after I did 1408 because they're very similar in yeah. that um, at no point, at, there's a point when you realize like, you guys aren't getting out. Yeah, this, this is not gonna go good for you. It's basically like a bunch of people fighting God. What's the Rotten Tomatoes uh, score of uh, Grave Encounters, of which there is a sequel, not as good. This is a 67%. That's um, not bad. Rotten Tomatoes, a solid C plus. My number four is easily um, one of my all time favorite movies in general. So this movie is actually the first horror movie I I purposefully and willingly watched. Oh. It is the first one that I went to theaters to see. What tender young age were you? It came out in 1999. Wow. Oh, wow. I thought it was earlier than that. Actually. 1999, I was a sophomore in high school. Uh, and it is The Blair Witch Project. Yeah, it is. Which, which is divisive among so many people. Um, a lot of folks hate this movie. I love the Blair Witch. It might not be the best party movie to watch. No, no, but it's, it's a good very, drinking movie. Yeah, it's a very atmospheric. Yeah. Creeps up on you like subtle creeps. It is three film students. Well, one film student in particular, and then two assistants. Um, and there is a urban legend about a creature called the Blair Witch in. It's Maryland. It's Maryland. Okay, yes, it's a Maryland a Maryland myth. Um, and they go to film a documentary. This is like one of the first like widely released documentary style horror movies. I think. It's, I would say the first it's major not, one. It's well, I'd say it's the first major one, but not the first in its style. So Blair Witch Project, and they go out and they go into the woods, and their goal is that they're going to film this documentary. Um, they're going to stay out in camp. And which honestly, like you wouldn't expect to be that big of a deal. And yeah. obviously things go awry because there really is something evil in the woods. Uh, tensions flare. Most of the movie is um, these three people losing their patience and their mind with one another. Yeah. Um, and then screaming a lot. And screaming a lot. All the all the scares are off screen. Yes. It, there's no monster that you never see a monster. Unlike a lot of modern documentary style horror movies, like the cameraman doesn't go like, there's the monster. <laughs> Ooh, oh. This let me way, hold on. Way. Let me let me fake. Let me focus real yep, quick. Yep. It is one of my all-time favorite movies. Although I remember closing my eyes during parts of it when I saw it in theaters. But I think my dad was more proud of me than he's been in my entire life when I told him that I wanted to go see a horror movie in theaters. He was like, "My son." You, what do you think of the Rotten Tomato is? Because it came out in '99. Yeah. Um, okay. So I'm gonna say it's a solid 80. It's an 86. Hey. 86 percent on Rotten Tomato stars uh, Heather Donahue. Mike Williams and Josh Linder, who all use their actual names. Yep. Number three. Number three. House on Haunted Hill. I would like you to please name off the cast for this movie because oh, yes. the cast it is, is impressive. bonkers. It sure is. All right. We got heading them up Jeffrey Rush, Famke Jansen. Then we have Tay Diggs, who is also in Equilibrium, which yes. I love. And who is also in House Delegata Groove Back yep. and is absolutely iconic as a hunk. He is a hunk. And then we have Peter Gallagher. And then following up, we've got Chris Catan. Chris Catan. Daniel, what is the plot of this movie? Well, you didn't let me get Oh, I'm sorry. Up. There's there's one there's another big character in there's it. Big one big more. actress, yeah. And this one, she is in everything. This it's is all, Allie Larder. Allie Larder. She is in God everything. She, so anyways, uh yeah, what's so what is the what is the plot of House on Haunted Hill? Okay, so House or on Haunted Hill. H O H H. Ho. Oh. 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 The plot of Ho oh is these six, roughly five, six strangers get letters in the mail inviting them to a mystery night uh, party at this big abandoned asylum. And they're all there competing to stay through the night. And if they do, 
there is a substantial cash reward. Classic, classic, classic setup. haunted setup. Yeah. You stay in the haunted house, you get some sort of reward. And, you know, obviously that's the premise, and then they slowly get picked off one by one by insane asylum ghosts. Yeah, are there actually ghosts in this? Yeah. Okay, yeah, I forgot. Yeah, it's the ghost of the doctor and his nurses. That's right. Yeah. It's very schlocky. It's fun. Oh, it's so schlocky. What is the Rotten Tomato score of this movie? <laughs> the Rotten Tomato score for this movie? I project it being not that high. What do you think it is? 33? 30. I was close, but yeah. I also wrote these in, so it's probably unfair that I guessed. It's a solid F minus. Yeah. I mean, 33 is watchable for oh, a God. horror movie. Especially if you like schlocky 90s horror movies. That's what I want. Yeah. I don't want it to be good. You no. want it to be schlock. Yes. If I wanted it to be good, I'd watch The Shining. God. All right. So that's your number three. That's my number three. All right. My number three is um, a much slower paced character movie. Ah, yes. It is from the year 2011. Mm -hmm. uh, it is The Innkeepers. And this I would have put on my list. The premise being that there is this um, hotel, this this inn, if you will. Uh, that Do they is, keep? Do they keep they're, it? They're keeping it, but only for a little bit because mm. it is, it's closing down. Uh, which is interesting. I like the premise because yeah. the premise is that there's this hotel that is closing and it's just like the last couple of winding out of, like the last yeah. couple of weeks winding down. And there's just these two staff members, um, the two main characters uh, who are watching over it and they're basically just taking shifts and they're, they're sleeping there. They use the opportunity to hunt for ghosts. It, the, the plot really kicks off when a psychic, well, a, a, re, a renowned a psychic of sort, alleged, alleged psychic, psychic um, takes up a room in the hotel and the main character really know, knows who she is and is like infatuated with her. Um, and the psychic kind of basically clues her in to say like, be this, there's some stuff happening. It's a very quiet movie. Um, it's not really like jump scare, jump scare, jump scare. It's a nice ghost story movie. Yeah, the rest of it is fun because of the chemistry between the characters and Sarah Paxton is the most adorable thing who has ever walked this earth. And there's some a few like sight gags that are actually funny. And uh, it's, it's well shot, it's a pretty movie. Uh, and this movie got a 79% on Rotten Tomatoes. So if you want like a low key chill horror movie to watch, yeah. Um, where the characters aren't just dicks making bad decisions, watch this one. Yeah, it's good. It's good. What is your number number two, Danielle? My number two. It is, of course, the classic, the like must watch every Halloween, fantastic romp, Hocus Pocus, in which Bette Midler chews the scenery for days, and it's great. And, that movie uh, is ten, is five percent horror, ninety five percent comedy. Okay, I okay. Well, which Jack and Jill with Adam Sandler is seventy five percent horror, twenty five percent comedy. So that's okay. that's a more oh. of a scary movie than this one. But there are witches and zombies and talking cats and ghosts. We got Max Kungerfinkel, who just moved to this New England town from California. These three witches were hung, but before they died, they... Cursed. Cursed? They have some some loophole so that they can come back. If, if, uh, if a virgin lights the black flame candle, does it have to be on Halloween? On Halloween night. On Halloween night. Yes. Then they will be resurrected from the dead and they will be able to come back and resume their child soul energy sucking, mm -hmm. which is what keeps them young. Yes things ensue. Max has a crush on one of his classmates uh, who is definitely like 30. Um, and they, he and his little sister, Thor Birch, and the 30 year old woman, they go to they break into the, the, the witch house. Oh, there's a talking cat. I love the talking cat. If you've ever wanted to know what the plot of Hocus Pocus sounded like being told to you by a crazy person, <laughs> <laughs> now you know. <laughs> So what is the what is the Rotten Tomato percentage the for Rotten that movie? Rotten Tomatoes. <sighs> this one was a surprise to me as well when I looked it up. By the way, it's if you thought you knew what it was, you probably don't. You don't. Just FYI, you don't. It's thirty-seven percent. It's thirty-seven percent. Barely. This is a classic. This is a classic. Barely above House on Haunted Hill. <sighs> barely. My my number two is uh, Oculus. Uh, starring Karen Gillan, uh, Brenton Thwaites, Katie Sackhoff, 
who's Starbuck. Yeah, that's right, Starbuck. Isn't it? Um, and Rory Cochran, who is the dad, who I thought was a completely different actor. I thought it was the guy from Office Space, but it's no, not. It's grown up kid from Empire, Empire Records. Yeah. Empire yeah. Records? Empire Records. Empire Weird. Records. Looks very similar to the guy from uh, Office Space. The basic premise is that um, they, they, with their parents, um, live in this house, and the dad either gets or finds this mirror and basically starts to lose his mind. Um, he starts to talk to the mirror. He starts to um, like act out against his family. Karen Gillan has, as an adult, um, with her brother who just was released from a mental institution, uh, has tracked down this mirror so that they can get their revenge on it. Yes. They want to prove that it's real. They want to prove that whatever happened in their youth, which we don't really see until like the movie progresses, uh, whatever happened in their youth did happen. Basically, much like our first few movies, they're trying to prove the existence of like an entity or a ghost or a demon or something. So it is it is tense and it has all of these moments where like you don't know what's real and what's not real. And that is the thing. And I think that's interesting because it's sort of like the premise of a mirror, yep. which is like reality is distorted when you're looking at it. It's yep. hard to tell what's real and what's not real. Um, it's a very tense movie. Um, there isn't any excessive gore. Um, it's it's like a ghost movie, but it's probably more about a demonic presence. And this movie has a 74% rating on Rotten Tomatoes. My number one is a movie from 2001. We uh, we watched it on, was it our first date? or It was our second date. Second date. We watched it on our second date because <laughs> it's fantastic and it's terrible and we love it. It is a little movie we like to call 13 Ghosts. Yes. 13 Ghosts has been uh, hailed by uh, Rest in Peace Roger Ebert as one of the worst movies that he has ever seen. I know this movie's bad. Oh yeah, it's bad. But we're people who can watch a bad movie and still find enjoyment. And if you can't do that, you need to reevaluate your life. But yeah, so please read us the cast list. Mr. Tony Shalhoub. Tony Shalhoub, his starring role. And I honestly yep. don't think I've seen him star in many other movies. No. Then we've got Matthew Lillard. I've loved Matthew Lillard since Hackers. And then we've got uh, Shannon Elizabeth, the famous actress with two first names. And the premise is that uh, Tony Shalhoub et al. have just lost uh, his wife, their mother. So they're all sad and they don't have money and they get uh, informed by a skeezy lawyer that they have been bequeathed this weird ass house. It, it is a clockwork see-through mechanical house. It looks like the devil's version of It's a Small World. Yes. Yes, it does. Oh, oh no. I forgot about the ghost. Okay, so you might want to get to the ghost. So let's back up a little bit. Okay. F. Murray Abraham is a rich dude. Yes. Who is eccentric. Eccentric. So eccentric that he collects ghosts. He collects ghosts. Or he has a, an, an elaborate plan to like most villains, um, become immortal or to gain power. I think it's become immortal. Yeah, it's something where he basically needs to enslave ghosts uh, and use these ghosts in some manner in conjunction with this house yeah, he to, meet to... His, to meet his ends. Creature design, great. There is some nudity. Um, oh, oh yeah, you'll know what we're talking about when it comes up. There's just a ghost who walks around naked. It's a lady with big boobs. Daniel, yes. what is the percentage of Rotten Tomatoes oh, for this boy. movie? Oh man, these are, this is, this is, we live in a world of people who hate fun, Yeah. okay? Oh, critics. Critics hate fun. Mm -hmm. And the evidence is that they gave this a whopping 16%. My number one is one of the um, best modern horror movies that I've ever seen. Uh, and I don't know why it's not on as many lists as I think it should be. Uh, it has star power in it. Oh, it has star power. It has one of the best scores I've ever heard oh, in a super horror movie. Good soundtrack. Yeah. Super good soundtrack. The premise is smart. And the footage is haunting. So I am speaking, of course, of Sinister. Sinister, which stars uh, Ethan Hawke. Yeah. The plot is that Ethan Hawke is a horror writer. Much he's a, like he's a, a true crime writer. He's a true crime writer. True crime writer, I'm sorry. How he goes about this is by moving his family into the usually into the town so his usual way of doing things is that um in order to write his book he moves his family into usually the town or the area that the crime took place in so he can engulf himself in it so basically a family had been hung from their backyard tree and one of the children had gone missing 
Uh, it is a cold case. They don't know who did it. They don't know where the kid went. So he, unbeknownst to his family, moves them into the actual house. Bastard. And then um, in setting up his writing space, he comes across in the attic a old-timey film projector. Which, and if you ever find old-timey film projector or film reels, do not burn them. Burn them immediately, set them on fire, shoot them outside. Take them to Goodwill. Don't touch them. Yeah. He is watching footage of the murder that took place in the house. Uh, it is set to the creepiest music that I've ever heard in a oh, horror yes. movie. And he is distraught by it. He literally watches this occur. I was too. Yeah, to it's creepy. Fair. It's creepy. He, he, he now is watching these movies that were taken by somebody who... Uh, killed previous families, but they were all at different places. So he's a little confused. He, he He's basically losing his sanity. These films are like haunting him. And They're all, they are haunting. And he speaks to a, uh, a demonologist. Yes. Who points yes. him in the direction of a, a an age old deity of sorts named yeah. Bagul. Bagul. So that's my number one. Yeah. All right. So we've done our top five. Uh, and now we are going to share with you two movies that we don't like. The one that I'm choosing is uh, The Haunting of Hill House, the Netflix series. Not a movie, but... A series. Yeah. And I'm not choosing it because it wasn't scary or I didn't like it. I am choosing it because I can't deal with that level of emotional manipulation when I'm watching a horror movie. It's too real. Oh, there's a lot of uh, traumatic emotional plot devices. Uh, what What's the review score on Rotten Tomatoes oh for that one? So this one... <laughs> This one gets a whopping 93%. Critically acclaimed. Yes. Daniel and hates I, it. No, 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 <laughs> no, 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 no. Up until the part when I couldn't take it anymore, I really liked it. And I really hours. wish I could finish. My number one, I went to the theater to see this movie and I talked 10 people that I knew. 10? To go with me. Maybe what it's an exaggeration. Bringer. But it was, I was, this was going to be the event of the year for me. And all I did is laugh during most of the movie. This movie that I'm speaking of is paranormal activity <laughs> the first one and we just lost everyone they're all gone now now sadly enough there are sequels oh there are many that are good there there is a number of paranormal activity movies that have come out since the original the original is one of the most anticlimactic um boring uh non-scary thing like because you get the trailer shows you what you're watching for 90 percent of the movie yeah you're watching time-lapse footage of um, a, a woman, woman standing. standing, staring, or moving around, or a, a door slightly moving in the middle of the night. Um, the characters aren't necessarily unlikable, but they're not, but they're not really likable. No. It is a movie that I was so psyched about that every director and every outlet was just like, this is this is making people like have heart attacks. Oh yeah, this is making people freak out in the theater. They're throwing up. They're people had to leave the theater. This is like The Exorcist all over again. Yeah. And people were and there's for for all of the acclaim that it got, it it is one of the most boring, non frightening movies that I've ever watched. And people make fun. People who love this movie will make fun of Blair Witch. Paranormal Activity, 83%. 83% on Rotten Tomatoes. 83%? You know what Sinister's at? 63%. Wow. And Hocus Pocus is at 30. Yeah. So this has been... I was, I was surprised you didn't have The Shining on your list. I was going to put The Shining, but that's such an easy... Like... Yeah, it's an easy one. It's like putting The Exorcist on your list, exactly. of course. But, uh, but yeah, this was our, our top five. This is our Halloween video. Um, this is just a little aside because we wanted to talk about things that we like. Uh, if you want to see more of this type of stuff from any of us on the channel, let us know. Um, it's kind of fun to just do and get on camera because we don't get to see anybody anymore. Because we don't get been... to put on human clothes anymore. This is the most that we've been dressed up in any degree for the last seven months. We've only been wearing pajamas for the entire time and yes. boxers. Uh, let us know in the comments what your top five are. Uh, or what your most despised horror movies are, or if you really disagree or agree with us. Nope. Um, we don't care. Nope. It's not going to change our opinions. Nope. Don't be a dick. But yeah, we hope you enjoyed this. Happy Halloween. Be safe. Yay. Happy Halloween. Wear your masks. Get your vaccines for the year. Stay safe. Bye. Bye.